All right, Doozer Shop, a little bit of an update. Uh, Saturday morning, got the shop opened up here a little bit. It's going to be bad lighting, but whatever. Um, I need to actually finish the shop and put lights up in the high bay here. But anyways, uh, got the uh, Jerosin mill. Uh, I just haven't done much with it. Just scraped on it a little bit, cleaning some of the gunge off of it. Um, that's a heavy son of a gun. I bet you that thing's every bit of 5,000 pounds. I think it's on a 5,000 pound pallet jack so I can roll it around, but you need the pinch bar to get that pallet jack rolling. Um, it's quite heavy. Uh, man, <clears throat> horizontal mill cutters. I've got about, I don't know, hundreds of hundreds of pounds worth from any size, from soup to nuts. I mean, I just got, and they're all sharp. Uh, one or two nicks probably maybe in them. But, uh, I mean, I got so many horizontal mill cutters. Um, yeah, I mean, I just got piles and piles and piles. <clears throat> Industrial surplus. Anyhow, um, I believe this is actually not a Cincinnati, but a, a Jerosin brand indexing... Uh, dealio universal indexing dealio and there's the uh, universal uh, tail stocker rocker so <clears throat> oh may I'll show you guys a little bit later I got some uh, piston rings from uh, auto piston rings for this guy OTTO piston rings uh, new old stock 1957 set of international harvester piston rings freaking happy about that alright um, let's see here. Now, <clears throat> we all love the Pratt & Whitney 2A extended column uh, jig bore Osaurus. <clears throat> I still haven't done anything with my pallet of uh, industrial surplus acquisitions here on my pallet. Um, one thing on the, the Miltronics, that's just fiberglass insulation, the Miltronics uh, partner there my buddy uh, James at Engineer's Workshop uh, acquired one, maybe a little bit older than this, but uh, check out his stuff. It's uh, pretty cool. Um, this is a uh, Miltronic Centurion something. I think this is a 2000, 2001, 2001. I don't know. But anyways, I got it. Uh, I got the 110 volt AC hooked up. Uh, I just spliced into the control transformer. I'm not running the three phase for the power, um, the uh, the motor drives yet, but um, <clears throat> but the computer part boots up just ducky, and when I move the uh, the hand wheel, right? Let me see if I can focus on. It. You can see, you can see the numbers, that middle y-axis changing. So the encoders are energized, so that's hip and happy, um, and you can toggle through the menus and all that but like I said it's not uh, got the three phase hooked up for everything to work uh, with the motor drives but I'm just kinda letting it run uh, I gotta do some research on changing the battery on the computer board everybody keeps mentioning um, you lose the settings or something and you have to go in the BIOS and put in some new god almighty I, I'm not a computer guy so I just I don't know but you might hear the fan, that's the computer running. <clears throat> so I just want to focus on one thing right here with the mighty <clears throat> Pratt & Whitney jig bore. So maybe you guys know about these, maybe you don't. And I know this is not great lighting. So that spindle, there's no draw bar, and you put collets in there, it's got like a nose cap. Kind of like an ER40 or an ER32 uh, collet the system but they're bigger collets the thread on that thing and, and I could be wrong but it's something like a three inch thread diameter outer diameter and it's like three and a half threads per inch so it's a very coarse thread um, might be four threads I don't remember I think it's three and a half but either way it doesn't matter so um, the Pratt & Whitney jig bore uses like a funky 
thread. So like I said, you can use collets and the collets, I've got straight shank collets, I've got Morse taper collets, which is interesting. It's a split collet from Morse tapers. I got a four and a three and a two or whatever, I don't know. But I found a boring head on eBay that will screw right on to this. Now it's not a Flynn. Now Flynn made boring heads and they sold them with the Pratt and Whitney. And I got, I think, I think I got two of them. The Flynn boring heads have this thread, uh, female thread like this in the back end of them. So I got a couple Flynn heads, and there's a couple more Flynn heads on eBay. Maybe I'll pick pick up another one just to have a, if I find one in good condition at a good price. So bear that in mind. That thread is sort of, I mean, you can you can make adapters on the lathe pretty easy, uh, especially with the lathes I got. So that's that. And uh, still got the pistons for the international motor laid out, whatever. And my tools and the whole, I got, I got to get it, everything back together. So, remember that thread. I'm going to walk into the shop here. And I got truck rims and leaf springs, or coil springs rather. I got, I got so much stuff. So, what I got here is a, uh, is a boring head, and uh, let me cut over here real quick and cut the radio. Um, this is a, <clears throat> Marino D'Andrea. There you go. So, anyhow, turn the, turn the lights on here. Yeah, jolly good. I always got, I got uh, a couple lamps on the bandsaw. It's always nice to have. Um, pick this up on eBay, and it's cool. You can crank it. And see the offset is changing, right? The other way. You can see what's going on. So this is kind of like a a wall hopper. It's got the, uh, the 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 limit travel stops, and there's your disengagement. Um. So. Two speeds, it's a neutral, and you got fine feed and coarse feed. Um, so that that's cool, and, and this is it just locks the adjustment, so that's kind of that's kind of cool. There's like a another fine adjustment or some kind of dial complements that one. Vernier. Um, this is a rapid return, so if the machine's spinning and you pop it in a neutral. It's a friction clutch, so you can pull that and the thing rapids over back to zero. Kind of neat. Um, I think DeAndrea started making these in 1951. Kind of a... Hey, look at that. Made in Italy. Perfect. That's a nice tag. Anyhow, um... The deal with this, man, this, he this is like 20 pounds. Show you. Ooh. So it's got a 24, I believe this is 24 millimeter thread with a 25 millimeter spigot. And this is your body that you, you hold rigid. So this screws into there. So this is an adapticator that somebody looks shop made somebody cooked up on the lathe and that screws right on the nose of the Pratt & Whitney bore, um, jig boring machine and then this that register is uh, one and three quarters of an inch so it's a good wide register because that's what the, the, the that register is about inch and three quarters 
So that screws in, right? Kind of switch hands here. So the idea, it's got the straight shank, threaded shank, and a straight shank. So da 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 da. So this came with it, right? I saw this on eBay. This son of a joker. All right. So that's so that screws on to the Pratt and Whitney uh, jig bore. I'm so happy with that. Let me. Uh, Set it down here and do a two-handed. Set it back. So, so yeah. So this is the stationary and this is the move. But you can see how it uh, it would be. Pretty cool. Um, Quite happy with this thing. I, I bought it because, you know, a jig borer, primarily you need to use a boring head on it. Obviously not um, exclusively, but when I saw this, and the seller was out of Florida, um, I don't think the seller, I think he spoke Spanish predominantly, so it was hard to communicate, and I asked him what the thread was, and he said, you know, not sure what you want, what tapers your machine. If you spoke Spanish, it would be easier to uh, communicate. It's like, well, I know how to order beer and I know how to order burritos, but I, unfortunately, I know very little Spanish. So I took a chance and I bought this D'Andrea boring head. And uh, he had it listed for. <laughs> For fifteen hundred bucks, and then there was shipping and tax on top of that. So I, I mean, you know, I I didn't get it uh, for free, but uh, I ponied up, pulled the trigger, and bought it because, uh, like I said, that adapter and I tried it. It screws right on. I had it out there already, screwed it on. I thought about doing the video with it screwed onto the Pratt and Whitney, maybe a later time. But the lighting is bad in the shop, and it's morning now, and the sun's not coming to the windows. But uh, it's it's kind of like a wall hopper, but uh, it's it's great and you you can feed in and feed out while it's spinning, which is so awesome. Uh, the wall hopper, you can grab the ring and you, you can set it on power feed, grab the you know by grabbing the ring and then release the ring, or you can set the stops and have it auto feed which is great with this thing you can like go into an o-ring groove you know go down make your uh, internal groove while it's running back it out um, and you can rapid back it out power feed back it out with the, the clutch lever there so kind of cool um, this is kind of neat um, as for the boring bar holder I don't have the holder and apparently, like a slide bar with a cutting a cutting bit came. This is a dovetail. I think it's like a 30 degree dovetail. Um, I found dimensions. Some guy put up a YouTube video. If you search DeAndrea, some guy has a YouTube video, and he, he was actually f videoing the instruction book. And I, I uh, paused on the page where he's got dimensions in the book uh, listed for this dovetail. Um, then it's the 30 degree dovetail and he's got the dimension over uh, round pins for measuring the exact spacing. But I mean, you know, any machinist knows you can, you can sneak up on it or, you know, there's six different ways to measure this, right? I mean, dovetails. So... This is going to be easy to make. I think I'll make a couple, you know, uh, for holding round boring bars. Maybe I'll make a really long one to get out in, you know. This is rated to bore up to 12 inch diameter without chatter, I guess. Is what, I don't know how they rate it because, I mean, this thing's about, uh, I'm going to 
gonna say six inches stem to stern there six inch diameter head let's call it um, the actual offset from travel to travel is uh, inch and three quarters so that so that's that's the actual travel of the the sliding piece inch and three quarters but uh, like I said so that's my deal I gotta I gotta make some you know I got maybe some of this stuff Maybe. Maybe. Oh, shoot. Maybe is that big enough? Uh, I don't know. May or may not be the right size. But anyhow, that's the idea. Just to make something to fit that. And yeah, I, I wish for the money it would have came with uh, some accessories. But in my mind, <clears throat> now I could have made that adapter on the lathe, right? But, you know, how long would that have taken? Three hours, jerking around, trying to measure, cut back, forth, try, three, four hours. I mean, I could, you know, so pre precision threads on two, you have to rechuck it. To do it right, it'd be a four hour job to make that adapter maybe, I don't know. And make it concentric. It doesn't have to be super concentric because it's an offset head, but you want it within less than, uh, I, I would try to make it within half, less than half a thou concentric because of this whole thing. Orbits if you don't and it just looks jiggy, uh, you know. But anyhow, so, uh, that's kind of what I wanted to show you guys. Um, I'll get another video and, and show it on the machine. But uh, like I said, I spent some, some decent money on this thing. But I really wanted it. And this is the old style. They make a new style D'Andrea head with red plastic knobs. I like the old style. This with the metal steel cranks. And, you know, it's just, it's more robust classic um, the dovetail slide for the offsetable is in fine shape um, oh side note I, I, I got some of these this is a deal on eBay I got these uh, diamond laps made by 3m they come out of England um, they're made in England I, I bought them from some US a, a seller I got coarse medium and fine um, they're like little diamond toothbrushes um, I think I got all these for 60 bucks. The, the three. So I didn't have any hand hones for uh, carbide. That's what diamonds are for, is for just kind of touching up your carbide tool bits or uh, whatever, whatnot. So, anyhow. All right, getting a little long here. Uh, let me just uh, show you that. And uh, yeah, pretty stoked. I'll show you more of this uh, in the future. So, yeah. Uh, Boring head, uh, D'Andrea Boring head. Talk to you later through the shop.